Hello and welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. So today on 22nd August 2019, our topics are Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, that is traffic, then FUFA gone Iron Age Settlement, Nishta Current Affair Capsule, MapAid Program and Previous Year Question Revision Series. So uh, let's move to our first topic that is Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, that is traffic. So the news is that India with the world's largest wild tiger population actually topped in the trafficking of tigers and also the tiger body parts over 19 years since 2000. That is the, uh, that is the value according to the new traffic analysis. Okay, so this is the news. So, talking about this wildlife trade monitoring network that is traffic, we know it is a leading non-governmental organization and it is working globally on trade in wild animals and also plants. Okay, so uh, both in the context of uh, biodiversity conservation and also sustainable, uh, sustainable development, clear. So, uh, this traffic, it was established in 1976 with its headquarters at uh, Cambridge, United Kingdom. So, we know it is a strategic alliance of uh, WWF and IUCN. Okay. So, uh, uh, the main mission is basically to ensure that trade in the wild plants and also animals is not a threat to the conservation of nature. So, it is its main mission. And uh, it is, uh, you have to note that it is complementary to the sites. Sites means convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora. So, you have to know it is in complementary to the sites. Okay. So, let us see about traffic and India. So, this traffic, it came to India in 1991 and it is operating as a division of WWF India. And uh, we know uh, it has, uh, since it worked closely with the national and also the state governments various agencies in order to help uh, regarding the study and also to monitor and also even to influence the action to curb illegal wildlife trade. Okay. Then, uh, so here I uh, will also explain regarding the sites. So, as I said, the site stands for Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. You know that. So, uh, uh, it is an international agreement between the governments also known as Washington Convention. So, its, uh, its basic aim is to ensure that international trade in the specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. Okay, so uh, the site, it, uh, it was uh, drafted as a result of a resolution adopted in 1963 at a meeting of members of the IOCN. Okay, then, so the site, it, uh, it entered into force on 1st July 1975 and uh, you know the site, it is legally binding on the parties but uh, it, it does not take the place of national laws. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, it also provides a framework to be respected by each party and uh, which has to adopt its own domestic legislation to ensure that the sites is implemented at the national level. Okay, and uh, it has got 183 parties. Clear, that is about this sites. Then, so, the species which are covered under the sites, they are listed in three appendices uh, so according to the degree of protection they need. So, they are basically, they are listed in three appendices and they are appendix 1, appendix 2 and appendix 3. So, this appendix 1, it includes species threatened with extinction. So, here you have to note that trade in uh, specimens of these species, it is permitted only in exceptional circumstance. That is about this appendix 1. And about appendix 2, 
uh, it includes uh, species not necessarily threatened with the extinction. But uh, here you have to note uh, the trade must be controlled in order to avoid uh, our in order to avoid utilization incompatible with their survival. Okay, and uh, regarding the appendix three, it contains species that are protected in at least one country, and uh, which has asked other science parties for assistance in controlling the trade. Clear? That's about this three appendices. Then uh, let's move to a second topic that is uh, Fufagon Iron Age settlement. So the news is that the recent uh, excavation which, are, which is being carried out at the uh, Maharashtra by the Archaeological Survey of India, it has revealed the evidence of an Iron Age settlement in the Vidarbha region that is in the Fufagon in the Vidarbha region. This is the news. So, uh, mm, you have to know this site it is situated in the vast meander of river Purna. Okay. So, you, we know this Purna it is a major tributary of Tapi river and uh, it is used to be a perennial river but at present it is completely dried up due to the dam construction in the upper stream. So, the, uh, this particular site it is actually it is situated about 20 meter away from the river bed and uh, its uh, one third portion it has been subjected to frequent erosion during the heavy water current in the earlier times. So, this is the particular location and here you can see the picture uh, you can understand that during the course of excavation what happens four complete circular structures they were exposed at the first. Okay. Then uh, these structures they were found to be enclosed with a circular dish like feature and also it contained post holes. And uh, in the diagram you can see inside of these structures floor activity and also storage bin platform and hearths were noticed. Then uh, about this bin platforms they are uh, as I said they are circular and they were of different sizes ranging from 19 centimeter to 125 centimeter in diameter. And this excavation it also exposed along with the side it, have, it also exposed antiquities like jasper, quartz, etc. Okay. And uh, here you have to note that iron and copper objects they have also been collected from all the trenches. Okay. And large quantity of graffiti marks it had been observed on this port sheds. Clear? Then here you can see the different objects which has been excavated from that region and uh, uh, so uh, we will be able to discuss what is the main significance of this excavation. So the excavation it is significant as uh, it indicates the presence of uh, sedentary means permanent settlement belonging to the Iron Age of Vidarbha. That is why it is very significant. And this settlement you have to know it comes under the category of a small village with the evidence of small agro pastoral community. And here uh, it is also uh, evident that the, the presence of craftsmanship in the form of beads, then also uh, there is the presence of jasper, quartz and they also use other artifacts like hopscotch, then wheels, etc. Okay. So, uh, hence we can conclude that the findings from this uh, Fufagon, it indicates the uh, contemporary with other Iron Age settlements of Vidarpa like Naikund, then uh, Bhajimori, then Takalkat, etc. Okay. So, chronologically we can say this site, it could be placed between 7th uh, BC and 4th CBC. Okay. Then, that is all regarding uh, second topic. Then uh, our next topic that is Nishta. So, the news is that the Union Human Resource Development Minister, he launched the national mission to improve learning outcomes at the elementary level that is Nishta in New Delhi. So, uh, you have to note during this program the Nishta website, then also the training modules, then uh, we can say primary booklet and even mobile app where launched by the minister during this uh, its inauguration time. 
ok. So, uh, this NISHTA it stands for National Initiative for School Heads and Teachers Holistic Advancement. So, uh, as I said it was launched by the Ministry of Human Resource Development and its, its main aim is to train over 42 lakh teachers across the country. Ok, that is its main aim. And talking about its basic objectives, as I said, its basic objective is to motivate and also to equip the teachers to encourage and also foster critical thinking in the students. So, by continuing this program, the teachers, uh, first of all, they will get an awareness and also develop uh, development in their skills on various aspects related to what we can say the learning outcomes. Then uh, even the preschool and pre-vocational education, then uh, regarding the school safety and even the security, then personal uh, social uh, qualities and also inclusive education, etc. Okay. So, uh, we can say this program, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it also aims to build the capacities of around 42 lakh participants. That means covering all the teachers and also heads of the school at the elementary level in the government schools and also the faculty members of SCRT, then the diets as well as uh, block resource coordinators and even the cluster resource coordinators in all states and union territories. So, uh, as I said, the teachers, they are also expected to be aware uh, regarding the rights of persons with disabilities act and even the uh, POXCO act regarding the children. Okay. So, we can say uh, the another aim of this program could be the integrated program therefore, we can say it seeks to train all heads and teachers as first level counsellors to be alert and also to be responsive to the needs of the students. Okay. So, uh, so we know the teachers they can promote joyful learning and also taking special care of the requirements of special children. Okay, so these are the aims of NISHTA. So, uh, uh, in our next topic that is in current affair capsule, we will be talking with fish species. So, the news is that recently five new fish species were discovered in Arunachal Pradesh. So, uh, the five new uh, fish species, they were Mr. Prabini, then uh, Exosma Kotilati and uh, third one that is Critiloglanus Tava Genesis, then fourth one Gara Rana Genesis, then fifth one uh, Psychochistra Haricocheri. Okay, these are the five new fish uh, species which were discovered in Arunachal Pradesh. So, here you have to remember five new spe fish species they were discovered in Arunachal Pradesh region. Ok. So, today in MAPED program we will be dealing with Shilka and Anusupa Lake. So, uh, the why it came in news because the Odisha Wetland Authority they have approved the implementation of an integrated management plan for two of its largest lakes. They are Shilka and the Anusupa Lake. Ok. So, as I said, the Odisha Wetland Authority, uh, they already, they had approved the implementation of an integrated management plan for Chilika and also the Anasupa Lake. So, uh, the five-year management of this lake, it is intended at strengthening the livelihood of thousands of fishermen relying on the two water bodies. So, besides this, they also promote tourism and also conservation of ecology will be taken up. Clear? Then, so first uh, we can see about Anshupa Lake. So, this Anshupa, it is the Odisha's largest freshwater lake. And it is also, it is famous for its sweet water fish and it is, uh, uh, locally it is known as uh, Pohla and uh, it is, uh, its main name is Lebiobeta. It's locally it is known as Pohla. So, this Anshupa Lake, it is famous for this sweet water fish. So, this uh, river, it spread over almost 2 square kilometer and also it is wintering ground for 32 different species of migratory birds. So, here you can see the location of uh, Ansupa Lake, it is located in Odisha and here you can see the location. Then, uh, so the current situation is that the lake, it was um, currently it was sustaining from the 
fresh water supply during the rain, uh, rainy season from Mahanadi river. So, with uh, what happens with the reduced inflow over the years, the lake's hydrology it has undergone serious and also visible changes. Okay, and uh, the water spread area it has reduced and also the uh, fishery resource it is almost non-existent. Clear? This is the current situation of Ansupa Lake. Then talking about the Chilika Lake, you know the Chilika Lake it is the largest uh, brackish water lake in Asia and also it is the second largest coastal lagoon in the world. And we know it is spread across the three districts of Odisha state and it is located at the mouth of Daya river. And here uh, another thing that you have to note is that here you can see the Nalabana bird, uh, bird sanctuary. Okay, Nalabana bird sanctuary it is located in this, stay, uh, in this lake. And uh, also the Erevadi dolphin. Okay, Erevadi dolphin. It is the flagship species of Chilika Lake. And you know it is uh, it is being recorded in the IUCN red list as endangered species. So it is also seen in this Chilika Lake. And it was uh, designated as the first Ramsar site in 1981 of India or because of its rich biodiversity and also ecological significance. Okay, these things you have to note regarding the Chilka Lake. And here you can see the location of Chilka Lake. And uh, in the last class we were dealing with rubber. Okay, and I asked you to find out where, uh, where the rubber board of India is located. So the answer is the Rubber Research Institute of India. It was established in 1955 and you know it is located uh, in the uh, Pudupalli region that is in Kottayam in Kerala. Okay. So, today your question is please find the name of the agency uh, that was formed with the objective for conservation of ecology of Chilika Lagoon. Okay. So, please find the answer and please comment it in the comment section. Okay. So, today in previous year question revision series your question is consider the following factors and the options 1 rotation of earth 2. Air pressure and wind. 3. Density of ocean water. 4. Revolution of earth. So, here which of the above factors influence the ocean currents? And the options A, 1 and 2 only. B, 1, 2 and 3. C, 1 and 4. And D, 2, 3 and 4. So, here you have to find out uh, which all factors influence the ocean currents. Okay. So, uh, you know an ocean current is a continuous and also direct movement of sea water. So, the rotation of earth that is the Coriolis force and also the forces acting uh, that is uh, it, it can be even wind, then temperature and also the salinity differences all these factors influence the ocean currents. Okay. So, uh, uh, the rotation of the earth that is the Coriolis force uh, actually it deflects the ocean currents. And uh, this uh, wind, you know wind is, it is the primary mover. So, uh, we can say first three options will be there. First two options will be there. So, now please look at option three. That is the density of water. The high density of water, uh, high density water, it means it will sink. Okay. So, all first three options, that is the uh, option one, that is rotation of earth, then 2 air pressure and wind and 3 density of ocean water. Obviously, these 3 statements will be there. Okay, so the answer will be B. B means 1, 2 and 3. For, uh, fourth option that is revolution of earth, it won't because uh, we, know, we know that rotation of earth is the factor. So, the fourth option will not be there. So, our answer is B that is 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So guys, uh, that's all for today's session. So if you have any doubt, please comment it in the comment section. Thank you for listening.